If you have a plan on the SAT reading section, you will be successful. Today, I am going to give you the ultimate plan for how to execute this section so that you can get a perfect score on the SAT reading section. All right, let's go. First thing that you should do is go straight to the questions. Okay, please do not read the passage. You're gonna forget a lot of what it says and the questions are very specific to certain parts of the passage. So you're better off going right to the questions and looking for those line reference detailed questions. Like look at this number two. See how it references lines one through 10. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to lines one through 10 and bracket that. It goes even from to awaited me. So I'm gonna put a bracket around that. And I'm gonna put the number next to it in the margin. That was number two, okay? Now I know what question it's on. So when I hit that, I can go right to the question and answer it. The next one's number eight. So line 44, they reference the word weight. That's called a word in context. We're gonna to go to line 44. We're gonna underline the word weight. Now, this might sound, feel like that it's taking a lot of time to do, but I promise you this is a time-saving strategy because you only have to read everything once. You won't have to read the passage, then go to the questions, then go back and read it again. You're preparing your passage so that you are ready to hit the ground running and you'll read everything one time and answer all those questions as you go. We have one in nine, so the word friend in 57 and 58. So we'll go back, we're gonna mark that up. The first passage is always the fiction passage. And sometimes on the fiction, there are less line references, but that's what you're going to do absolutely first. Think of yourself like a chef on a cooking show. If you've ever watched a cooking show, you don't see the chef once the cameras are rolling, chopping onions or measuring out how much milk they need. Everything's already in preset containers and then they just start throwing things into the bowls. You're like a chef on a cooking show. So prepare your passage first and then you can just go. All right, the next thing that you're gonna do after you mark up your passage with the line reference questions, you're going to link your double questions. So let me show you what a double question looks like. Double questions have these questions, like look at number four, it says the answer to the previous question. So four goes with three, so you're gonna draw a line between those two. This is because they give you lines, they give you answer choices, and all you have to do is go to the lines to find the answer to the question you're in. You wanna start by using number four to get you the right answer to number three, so you're gonna do these backwards. So let me show you how it works. You will read the question in number three. In this case, it says, with which of the following statements about his father would the narrator most likely agree? So you're looking for some way the narrator feels about his father. Then you're gonna go down into the lines and you're gonna read each group one at a time until you find something that he talks about or how he feels. And then you can match it up to number three. So it's way easier to do it backwards and to find the lines first. I always tell my students, do not think, do not analyze. Take your brain out and leave it at the door when you come into the reading section. You are a robot. Please do not be offended. I didn't mean anything by that. I know you're not a robot. I know you're a human being. Let's continue the video. Literally all you're doing is finding textual evidence in the passage to back up the multiple choice answer. So you're just gonna see what does the passage say? Okay, let me pick an answer that also says that. That's it, don't read between the lines. When you start assuming and thinking, oh, it might be, I'm thinking it could be this instead, that's when you're gonna get in trouble. So just find the textual evidence like on these double questions and keep going. And here's the third thing that you'll do before you read. Up here at the very beginning of the passage, so many students ignore this, but it is so important. You're gonna read the intro, okay? The intro tells you a lot about the passage. The dates are gonna tell you how hard it is. So if it's before 1920, this is a tougher passage, so you've gotta get prepared for that. 
I'm not going to understand everything this means. It's basically written at a different time where they spoke differently. They're going to use words I don't understand. At least if you're prepared for that, you'll be ready to tackle it and more like mentally sound. You're not going to feel as freaked out. Also, it could give you the tone. So the title might tell you how the author feels. If they say the curse of the automobile in the title, you know the author doesn't like cars. So you can, it can help you answer some of the questions. Um, it also can tell you something about maybe the plot or what's going on. For instance, in this one, this is a fiction passage. So we get a sentence that at least tells us what's going on in the book because they kind of throw you into the middle of a novel you've never read it before. So at least we know the narrator who is a writer recalls his childhood in early 20, 20th century Barcelona. Now the fact that this is an early 20th century Barcelona can kind of clue you in that this might be written in a different way, in a different time, much, you know, a hundred years ago. So maybe the wording on this one will be a little bit more challenging too. But you will do those three things first, and then you can start reading the passage. While you read, once you hit a line reference, read the whole thing. For instance, I'll start reading, and then I see that this whole chunk is on number two. I will maybe give myself a cushion, like a, or read like a couple lines after it if I feel like I need more information to understand what they're saying in those lines. And then I'm going to immediately go over to question two and answer it. And then you'll just keep going like that. Read, once you hit another line reference, answer it. At the very end, once you're done hitting up all those detailed questions, you'll go back and you'll answer any questions you have remaining. These main idea questions are great to save for last because you'll already have the detailed questions under your belt and the detailed questions kind of give you hints and clues as to what the main idea is. So you'll be more likely to get that one correct. All right, guys, as always, happy to help. Please try this out and leave me a comment below. Let me know how this execution strategy is working for you. And subscribe to my channel because I have more videos coming your way to help you ace the SAT reading section.